Testosterone is a hot topic on social media these days, and you won't have a hard time finding lots of so-called experts telling you how to quickly fix your testosterone. However, one specific claim I've seen quite a few times is that testosterone values in general are declining for males across the board. But is it actually true? Let's discuss the nuance to this. Welcome back, everybody, to the Building Lifelong Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Renke. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Our goal here is to help you stay active and healthy for life through practical and actual information. And today, we're talking all about testosterone declining in the general public. So let's start with the claims here first, right? So the claims are that testosterone is decreasing across the board. So it's just a widespread, not just individual people. It's like as a society is going down. You know, sometimes I see some of the claims people saying we're losing what makes us men, meaning we're losing our testosterone, right? It's kind of on a different side of the internet spectrum than a lot of people probably watching this hang out with, but there are some people saying, Hey, we are losing what makes us men. They're saying, Hey, it's somehow men's fault that we're not being manly enough. And if we do manly things that will raise our testosterone levels back to being normal, all that, like I said, that I'm not talking about that claim necessarily today. We're going to talk about the claim of is testosterone in general as a society decreasing, but just to talk about that other one for just one quick second, like the idea that like, we're not being manly enough. And that's why our testosterone is decreasing. Like that just doesn't make any sense. I don't buy into those claims. And I'll explain that for a second. Like, first of all, like that's not a helpful attitude, right? Like, Oh, you need to be a man. It's like, it's not how it works. Like, I don't care what your persona is, right? If your biology is jacked up beyond your own control, then nothing's going to change, right? Like you can't do anything about it. You can't like alpha male yourself into a high testosterone. Like that's not how it works. So if you're on, you know, scrolling through YouTube shorts and you see people talking about, Hey, like we're not manly. And that's why we're losing testosterone. Like just, I would, I'd swipe, I'd continue to swipe on that. So like, I'm just gonna put that to bed that that is not what I'm preaching here, but I wanna talk about today. Hey, is testosterone in general decreasing as a society? So let's kind of look into it. And so the question we have is, is this actually true? And just like most of the things I talk about, it kind of depends and maybe. So at first I didn't think there's anything that was gonna come from this. Like, I'll be honest, I've seen this kind of all over the internet. And so I was like, okay, you know, what's this gonna be? I thought it was gonna be something similar like the soy topic I covered previously saying, you know, everyone says soy is the worst thing in the world and takes your testosterone and look into it. And there's a whole bunch of nothing there other than mechanistic ideas. And so I thought this would be more of the same, but, but there actually may be some signal to the noise here. It's not, you know, a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination, but there is some data that I was looking at pre prepping for this, that we've dropped over a hundred milligrams per deciliter on average in testosterone over the past few decades. So, you know, going back a couple decades to where we are now, we've kind of decreased as a society of potentially a hundred. Now, like I said, I will talk more about why this may not be the case, but so we do know there are issues, right? There's lots of issues with testosterone tests and this could be inside our norm, normal, like standard error. So like that could totally be it, but there's enough of a discrepancy there, enough papers that I've seen mention it, that it's at least worth talking about today to kind of say, Hey, is there some signal inside the noise? So I do want to talk about some caveats. Obviously, anytime we're going to talk about anything nuanced, we have to talk about caveats and stuff. So the first and foremost, the biggest thing, and really the most important thing is that all the data on this is non-experimental, meaning we're looking at trends. And so Obviously you're like, well, Jordan, yeah, we're not experimenting. And I understand that, but we can't fully know what is the cause. We can only speculate, right? So people will say, hey, we see this possible trend. Like, first of all, we don't know if it is a definitive trend. That's like the first thing. But then second of all, I say, hey, with this trend, like what's going on? We will never know definitively if, you know, if it actually is going down, what the definitive cause is. That's just how it knows. To fully know the mechanism, we'd have to isolate men and their own lineage and expose some of them to some things and others to non-exposures and not having their, and obviously ethically and feasibly, that's impossible to do. We can't do that. So we do the best we can and try to look at the data and then adjust the numbers to account for these possible conflicting things. So that's kind of how it goes. And so next thing I want to talk about though, is these proposed mechanisms for why could, if our testosterone, testosterone is decreasing, what are three big reasons for why this could be happening? And the first one we're talking about is obesity. And as you know, if you've listened to episode six here on the podcast, obesity can play a big role in testosterone. Huge. Honestly, I think probably the biggest factor that we have these days for controlling our testosterone is our body composition. As we know, adipose tissue has the aromatase enzyme, which then converts testosterone to estrogen. So that's the main reason for why when we have elevated uh, adipose tissues we had tend to have an increase in estrogen and decrease in testosterone. So therefore that is once again more adipose tissue equals less testosterone. And the argument is that we as a society have gotten bigger and bigger over time. And because of the increased adiposity, that's why we have lower testosterone. So that's like the one general consensus saying, Hey, this could be the idea. However, it doesn't seem to track hundred percent. There are multiple studies that looked at these and try to control for obesity in their analysis. And they still found a decrease in testosterone that can't be explained by just this alone. So that being said, it's obviously contributing. You know, we've talked about this ad nauseum. It's definitely contributing. It can have a effect on testosterone, but it doesn't seem to be contributing a hundred percent. The next mechanism we're going to talk about is sickness. And I don't mean sickness. Like, Hey, I have a cold. 
I'm saying sickness that in general, we use that in medicine saying this person's really sick. That means I could just have lots of conditions. So overall, like as a society, we are just sicker in general. We have more and more comorbid conditions, things like obesity, hypertension, type two diabetes, sleep apnea, hyperlipidemia, you name it, we can go on and on and on. We tend to have more of these in society. And not only do we have them earlier, but obviously we're living longer. So we tend to collect these more. And it's like I said, as I've talked about in previous podcasts, when you start to accumulate these comorbid conditions, you tend to have a decrease in testosterone. So that's pretty standard. But whether this is through, you know, aromatization, like we've seen in adipose tissue, or maybe a decrease in SHBG, like we've seen in diabetes, there are multiple factors for why it could be playing in. But that being said, is this the fact that we are only getting sick and this is the big reason for it? And once again, this doesn't explain everything, right? We've talked about when we try to control for things, we control for things like diabetes and hypertension, all those things. And it does seem to have an effect. We know that, but it doesn't seem to be one-to-one saying, hey, this is the reason. So once again, not slam dunk that it's going there. And the final mechanism I want to talk about here is environmental factors. So this one seems to be interesting for me. So this is the one I probably know the least about and the one that I don't necessarily spend a lot of time focused on, but so it's interesting to learn here, but it's kind of intriguing. So we know all about lifestyle stuff, right? Like maintaining good body weight, trying to stay healthy, do you use alcohol, tobacco intake, all those things. But there are some other lifestyle things that may play a role. Specifically, we're talking about exposure to estrogenic compounds in our day-to-day life. And so I just want to step back, take a caveat, say, no, I'm not talking about soy or soy-based foods. We talked about that in episode eight, as now I'm talking about. I'm talking more about like estrogenic compounds like bisphenol A, which can be found in certain plastics. And overall, as a society, I think we're much more aware about that now. And we've done a, lot, a big job of kind of making sure things don't have bisphenol A in it. And we've more recently started limiting all these things in our day-to-day products. But the long-term impact of them is unknown. And you know, for a long, long time, there is a very, very common component of, of plastic. And so there are some thoughts that having exposure to estrogenic compounds can decrease testosterone because like we've talked about in previous mechanisms ad nauseum how that kind of go hand in hand so those are the three main mechanisms once again there's no evidence saying that one is the definitive cause at the end of the day it's probably all three you know everything is a little more confusing than we want and life is kind of gray and that's kind of how it works but that's kind of what we're thinking and we're looking at there and so you might be saying all right cool well Maybe testosterone is going down. Maybe it's not. doesn't really matter. So I do want to talk about fertility, right? Because like at the end of the day, if testosterone is down just a little bit, but it doesn't really affect fertility, then like that's not really that big of a deal. And we'll explain more why later. But the question is, does it affect fertility? And once again, we're having a possibly, <laughs> it's a not a definitive answer, but it does seem that sperm counts are decreasing overall. And eventually there could be a point where it could be a problem. And can we explain this away? Um, yeah, we absolutely could explain this away saying, hey, we have different measurements, you know, different samples. But overall, once again, it seems like if sperm counts are potentially declining as, as well as testosterone, that could be potentially concerning down the line. Is it concerning right now in this time and place? Like, I know it doesn't look like that, but like I said, we're looking at trends and that's kind of what we're looking at. And so a question that I ask, you know, when I'm looking through this data is, well, is there an explanation for how we could explain this way, right? Like we say, okay, this change that we're seeing in the data, is there a reason that, you know, maybe this isn't legit what we're seeing? And absolutely, we could have a couple different reasons. You know, we know that testosterone tests have changed over time, right? So our assays are much more accurate today. So maybe, maybe we're just getting a more realistic number now than we've had previously. And today's what we have is actually our normal and our previous normal should not actually be in there. Okay, that's an idea that's, you know, one idea I had. That being said, it's not very clear and I can't really say, hey, like one way is necessarily the right way or anything like that. And then I said, on top of that, we have to think about, hey, could there actually be variance in this? Then could there be a variance inside the testosterone assays? We talk about being more, more accurate, but they also have huge fluctuations. So is this change that we're seeing, you know, we're tending to see a trend, is it actually important? You know, we talk about statistically significant versus clinically significant. And is this change in testosterone that we're kind of seeing in the epidemiologic data, is it actually important? Right. We know that testosterone assays can be anywhere from like, I mean, we've seen sometimes even just day to day checking from one day to the next day, 30% plus changes. So, I mean, all these normal fluctuations and mixed in kind of lab error and all that stuff, could this decrease we're seeing just fall within the, hey, it could be a normal change? That's quite possible. And so that's what I said. I'm not ready to say, like, hey, this is definitively happening. And that's kind of where I'm sitting right this time. And so, like I said, it's kind of wishy washy and I'm not sure. And so, the question I have is like, well, what if this is true? Like, if this is true, nothing I recommend changes. We're still focusing on the big rocks, right? Things like body composition, exercise, diet. That's kind of where we want to go. And I don't like just throwing things out there, right? For no reason. I'm not about that. I think it's very easy this day and day and age on the internet to be make a big claim, like, like a big scary claim, right? It's super easy to put a thumbnail up and say, like, 
men are dying or something like that and get clicks and then say, Hey, this is the end of the world. Like at the end of the day, I don't think that's helpful. And so like I said, I'm not trying to scare people. I don't think scaring people in health works. I mean, if it, if scaring people and threatening people worked, we would have a answer to the obesity problem, right? Like we just know it doesn't necessarily work. So I'm not trying to scare people. However, I think it's important to know a potential problem and pretend like it doesn't, not pretend like it doesn't exist, right? So if this is a thing like we see this trend, hey, maybe it's happening, maybe it's not. I don't want to just put my head in the sand and say, oh, I don't care about it. Like, I'm not sure. Like, no, I think you deserve to know. And I like looking at this and, and learning from it too. So I want to make sure that we're kind of forecasting and looking and saying, hey, this could be happening. This is something that could be a problem in the future. So I don't want to pretend like it doesn't exist. So, and I like that because once we know a problem, we can attack it, right? And the same thing goes here. If this is something that's going on, we can kind of make changes, potentially change it, you know? One thing that we can do here, you know, it's not as easy in terms of personal changes for this, right? So it's not like 100% if you lock in your lifestyle in terms of your body composition and your diet, like, you know, there could be other factors going on. So things like the environmental factors we talked about. So it could need changes from a higher level, more systemic or governmental involvement is something that we think about. But like I said, I'm all about taking personal accountability and there are certain things you can do to maximize your lifestyle, right? So obviously potentially avoiding estrogenic compounds, specifically like bisphenol A other estrogen, like known estrogen containing compounds. Those are things to like generally think, I think it's a reasonable idea to approach. Like I said, I'm not going to go everywhere and say like, Hey, you need to check every single thing that touches your body. Cause like I said, I just think the risk reward of that, of being paranoid versus that isn't worth it. But if there's like known estrogenic compounds, probably a good idea to avoid them. And like I said, on top of that, doing all the other things I talk about all the time. But like I said, if this is important to you, then go ahead and try to make the changes that matter to you. Like I said, but I don't want you losing sleep over this because we can only control what we can control, right? So whatever's happened has happened and we can only control from this step forward. That's kind of how I think about life is, hey, whatever you've done previously, whether it's lifestyle changes or whatever you, you know, kind of regret, all you can control is next step. You know, as a former baseball player, for me, it's always like, what's the next step at? You know, whatever happened previously, doesn't matter. You can only control what you have in front of you. And so that's what I think about this is, hey, if you're freaking out about, oh, I was exposed to this or I did this or my next, forget that. At this point, you can do one thing and that is control the next choice you make. And so I think it's really important. And at the end of the day, does this really matter? Is this in the real life? Does this really matter? And I think this only matters in individual context for some people, right? So unless you're super into policy, right, then you're not going to be able to have the skill set to enact huge wide level change in terms of environmental factors. But from a day to day matter, that is something you definitely can definitely take control of. However, I do not want you to fix it on it. Like I said, I don't want people to do this as a trend. This really doesn't matter. Like if it is decreasing as a global trend, right? Like say, hey, we've, oh, we've decreased from the 1970s and now like, I don't know what to do with that other than to live your life that you have currently, right? I mean, obviously we've, like I said, we talked about, hey, still trying to figure out, is this true? Is this trend really, it's really happening? Is there environmental stuff? Okay, that's great. That is a question for the future, but like you in your life right now, what can you do? We've kind of talked about some of those things. But that being said, every person is so different, right? So back in the day, someone might have, you know, lower testosterone than their father, but still maybe perfectly normal and have no issues whatsoever. And so we just don't know. And once again, just looking at a number, this is kind of a theme we've talked about over and over and over again, is that I never just look at a number, right? So if we just look at a number and say, oh, my testosterone is 600 and it should be 700. Like, well, do you have any symptoms? Like, is anything else going on? And so I don't look at just numbers and say, hey, this matters the most. And so I will look at everyone as an individual person, right? And then we make a decision about, hey, what's going on? What are the next steps we need to take? And so that's why for this thing, just kind of 10,000 foot view, just stepping back saying, hey, control the things you can control and don't worry about specific numbers. Like I said, don't fixate on a testosterone number, you know, and just do the things you can control. Don't worry about someone saying you need to be more man to do these things and this thing, and that's going to save the you know men out there. Like just do your best to be healthy and control the things you can control. That's kind of my overall view on this. Like I said, is it a little hands off? Absolutely. But once again, I don't think worrying about something ad nauseum that we don't really have a huge amount of control in, I don't think it's worth it. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments, but either way, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If you would, I really appreciate if you join my mailing list every week. I'm going to give you an email kind of updating on the newest videos, podcasts, or articles that I have out. And I promise I won't spam you because I hate spam. So, but thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Now get off your phone, get outside, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.